Welcome to the solution video for puzzle number seven, which was an internet puzzle hunt in which two lucky solvers were randomly chosen to win a $50 cash prize. Before we get into the mechanics of the puzzle and solution, congrats go out to Darren H and Davo B, who each scored $50 and were among 14 people who solved the puzzle correctly. Congrats to all 14 of you, really. Now, this puzzle's based on the popular puzzle known as Sudoku. A lot of us know what it is, but for the uninitiated, Sudoku is played on a grid of 9x9 nine nine spaces. Within the rows and columns are 9 squares made up of 3x3 three three spaces. Each row, column, and square, 9 each, needs to be filled out with the numbers 1 through 9 without repeating any numbers within the row, column, or square. In most cases, some numbers are already pre-filled in for you. The fewer the numbers that are given to you, the more difficult the Sudoku generally is. In the case of what we're using for puzzle number seven, it's a fairly easy one. The truck puzzle's twist, however, comes in after solving the Sudoku puzzle and figuring out what to do with the numbers in the areas with the colored shapes inside. Assuming you've done the work, here's the Sudoku solution. What becomes pretty clear now is that we need to move these numbers over to the corresponding shapes that appear to correspond with another YouTube URL and figuring out what the key is with circles, triangles pointing up and triangles pointing down. If you're familiar with how YouTube formats the URLs for their videos, they're most commonly prefaced with watch question mark V equal sign followed by 11 alphanumeric characters, numbers with both uppercase and lowercase letters with an occasional dash or underscore thrown in there. Now, the dilemma is this. How do we get a usable 11 character YouTube URL out of something that's 15 characters long? Well, knowing we need to pare this down, let's get to the work of figuring out the key. If we know that the URL is very likely going to contain letters and numbers, we'll need to see which of these would translate. And the easiest way to do it is using our trusty A1Z26 cipher, which has come into play in past puzzles. Since some letters correspond to numbers that have double digits, it's safe to assume that shapes and colors that are paired would translate to a letter that's at least J or later in the alphabet. So let's translate those to letters. All of these pairs also happen to be triangles, so one could also reason that all the triangles could be letters. So let's translate those to letters too. That leaves the circles. Since we're assuming the triangles are letters, then we can also assume the circles are numbers. So we don't need to do anything with those. That definitely narrows down our characters to 11, but this URL still doesn't pull anything up. Lastly, we need to discern which of the letters are uppercase and which are lowercase, since we know most YouTube URLs contain both. If you've made it this far, it's easy to figure out that the triangles that point up are the uppercase and the ones that point down are the lowercase, which then gives us the correct URL. Plugging this one into YouTube sends us to a 30 second ad from a company known as Hornet Viking. In these turbulent times, we've always been here for you. You can always count on us to be there whenever you need us. And even when you don't, we'll never go away. At Hornet Viking. The world is what you make it. A company with the same logo as previously seen on stickers that have appeared in treasure chests from past hunts, and what we were warned about by our enigmatic friend Ken after the last puzzle. The people I'm talking about are a company called Hornet Viking. They have their mitts in every facet of our lives. They know who we talk to, what we eat, where we go. They're everywhere and they hold more power over your lives than you could possibly know. The ad itself also briefly appeared in two previous puzzle videos. In these turbulent times, 
We've always been here for you. Next to the hive, don't go away. In these turbulent times, we've always been here if for I you. If I have to hear these mother... It's creepy, isn't it? Anyways, at the end of the ad, the company's website pops up. HornetViking.com Heading over there, we're treated to the company's logo on its distinctive blue background. If you run your mouse or cursor over the eye, it glows bright green. By clicking on the eye, we're brought to a very antiquated looking directory with folders for each of the puzzles, including our current puzzle number 7, and also one for puzzle number 8, which doesn't yet exist, but we'll get to that later. Clicking on the links to earlier puzzles shows us a photo of something having to do with that particular puzzle, be it a treasure chest or a screenshot from that puzzle. But clicking on the one for puzzle number seven gets us to the finish line. A simple email and a security check to make sure you weren't cheating puts 14 of you on the list for potentially winning a $50 prize. One other bonus treat was being able to see the season one finale video before it was eventually made public. If you haven't yet seen that one, the link to it is in the description below. It's a pretty tidy summation of our side story involving Ken thriving to this point, if you've been following along. And that about wraps it up, except for... Puzzle number eight. A couple of you internet sleuths notice that if you hover your mouse over the photo of the nondescript storefront, a coded message pops up. One last puzzle to solve, it would seem. This one was a simple Caesar cipher that when decoded reads Grand Cane, Louisiana. I'll let you draw your own conclusions or theories as to what that means or why it's relevant. But until then, season one is a wrap and the story continues soon with puzzle number eight, another Twin Cities, Minnesota physical treasure hunt. Until then, puzzle pals, stay safe and warm out there, and we'll see you on the next installment. Thanks for joining me.